that day just went really well. I was in a really good mood. Um, I had a hot date earlier that day. They showed up. <laughs> yeah. I knew I'd have another hot date oh, after the wing eating God. contest. And she would Done. still go out with me, even though I was covered in wing sauce Done. and roast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Who's Joe YouTube Edition. Who's Joe? Who the f is Joe? Who's Joe? Who's Joe? Who's Joe? Yeah. Who is Joe? Today I am here with Nick Wire and Mickey Sudo. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little about yourselves? Um, hi, I'm Mickey Sudo. I'm the top ranked female competitive eater and number fifth ranked eater with Major League Eating. I'm Nick Weary, number six with Major League Eating and the second best eater in my own house. <laughs> Obviously, people watching now know that this is a little different than any of my other staring contest videos because I've got two people. So I, I was talking with Thelma about it before, but the way this is going to work is it's going to it's going to be like a gauntlet. Nick is going to go first. Uh, then either he's going to beat me, or when he blinks, it's going to switch over to Mickey. And. Uh, just like all the other previous videos, we'll be doing the interview throughout the whole thing. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask to both of you, the first question is if you could collaborate with anybody on anything, who would you collaborate with? And uh, now I'm going to start the countdown for you, Nick. Five... Yep. Four, three, two, one. Uh, I think if I could collaborate with anybody on anything, it might actually be um, Jordan Peterson. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. You know, I like that he's a lot of fact-based. Um, slightly, people consider him opinionated, but I, but I'm just a big fan. So I think it'd be pretty cool to try to um, just sit down and, and discuss some things with him. <laughs> so uh, okay, um, I was about to yeah. say that kind of lined up perfectly with him finishing answering his question. So okay, so I'm gonna let get my blinking out of the way. And now I'm <laughs> okay, I, I there's no way I can barely think. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna go with something easy. I I love Badlands and I've done a lot of mm. uh, contests with him. He's a fun person to be around, and uh, I'd collaborate with Bad Lunch Jugs. <laughs> I can't do this. My eyes are meant for this. It's too dry. Sorry. Oh, gosh. That was good. That was good. They, they were... Okay, sorry. I don't know if you blinked in the entire time we've had you on the phone. No, he's the blinkless wonder. I have it's not. amazing. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think you have. I, I can't do this. Okay, well, my eyes are already... So we got Jordan Peterson and Badlands Chugs as our collabs. Oh my gosh, sorry. Okay. Well, those were, I could, I could barely even say. Those were valiant efforts on your part. And Nick, you actually probably lasted longer than the majority of people have. So kudos to you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, my next question actually um, kind of spins off one of your previous videos where when you were training for Nathan's, why didn't you let the bears practice with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, for anybody listening, uh, we were about to do our first ever hot dog practice uh, in front of our garage, and a bear came out while we were cooking up the hot dogs. We're about to practice right there in front of the garage, and a bear shows up. So we have taken it inside. Um, that would have been really, that would have been something if we had started. I don't know if I would have. <laughs> I think I would have been so irritated that something or someone interrupted my practice. I wouldn't have had the wherewithal not to jump or lunge at said bear and then get, become malted. So uh, one thing you know if, if you've watched my other videos is at this point I am going to attempt to go the rest of the interview without blinking as well. It's a doozy. <laughs> I, so I, people always ask us how we do what we do. 
and we use any sort of aids to eat a lot or digest food. Do you use any sort of eye lubricant <laughs> to avoid blinking? No. No. It's like no humidifiers in your environment. <laughs> God, it's just a, an odd talent that you discovered. So this is a question for either, either one of you or both. What is your proudest moment as a competitive eater? I mean, my first time in Nathan's is really cool because that's like our big show, so to speak, our Super Bowl. Uh, so the first time, um, but honestly, this past year at, at Bratz, even though I or about a year and a half ago now at Bratwurst, I got second. Um, but three of us managed to break the world record, and I beat her by half a bra and only lost to Jeff Esper by half a bra worst. So to anyone that does what we do, to to be able to break a world record and fall in between her and Jeff in a contest, you uh, you definitely brought it that day because you're not going to trip over the door jam and end up there. Yeah, um, I I think I'm I'm proud of the perks that. I've earned along the way. And some of them are through ability and some of them are being in the right place at the right time or, or, you know, getting to know the right people. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but sometimes they're the intangible things that you work toward or the, the intangible things that pay off. Um, so I, I think, you know, with competitive eating, it's great to be completely talented, but I think, there are people who've taken, um, there are people that have like done more than their talent would even allow. Um, and so I think, I, to be honest, like, I mean, like, it's weird to say this like about other people, but like Matt Stoney is a great eater, but I think what he's accomplished far outweighs even his eating ability. So like, that's that for me, like if I were Stoney, I'd be super proud of that. It's, it's one thing to be a great competitor, but like he's accomplished so much beyond that. So I think on, on my little level, like, yeah, I've won some contests and I've, I've racked up some belts, but there are like a few things beyond that, that, that I think were, were not just merely talent or ability at the table. Um, How you carry yourself. Yeah, uh, because, and I, and I think Joey's done a great job with that too, because I mean, he, yeah, he wins a lot of contests, but he's also kind of built himself up um, in a lot of ways that you know, somebody with the same records might not have. So I don't know, that, that's super, super vague. Um, with that said, I'm super proud of like, you know, belts and stuff. And also on a kind of cheesy level, I'm proud of being the kind of person that would find the love of my life on the competitive eating circuit. Aww. Um, if you guys, if for anybody who knew me like four or five, even three years ago, um, I was not at that point in my life um, personally, so. I think I've come a long way, both individually and since meeting him, and I'm just in a good place in life right now, so I'm proud of that. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if any of that made sense. I just didn't I want to. My, my broad answer is really lame now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? No answers are lame. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, both of you um, almost took the competitive eating world by storm when you entered it respectively. How did, how did other competitive eaters respond to how quickly you two rose through the ranks? Yours is more recent, so yeah, she was she was up near the the upper echelon, you know, pretty much as soon as she got in, she was top five, walking in the door, basically like a a likeness to like a, a LeBron James oh. in basketball or a Ken Griffey Junior, um, almost. Where maybe she wasn't the top dog, but basically it was like she came in, she was there. So um, that's always tough for other readers. For myself, it was like I came in, I was ranked fifteenth, um, right out of the gate, and. Um, said a number that if I didn't win my second qualifier, it would have been the highest number ever that didn't qualify for, for Coney Island. Um, moved up to uh, eighth and then moved up to sixth. So I guess for me, what's different is um, from a lot of eaters is I just kind of continued to get better. Where a lot of you just kind of, I don't want to say, they, I guess they plateau because there's, how much does it mean to you ultimately? And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but other eaters have been. I can tell you how I reacted to him being ranked from him being raised to eighth place. 
Yeah, yeah. She's like, <laughs> she as soon as I the rankings put me at eighth about a year and a half ago, she's like, oh, what's it like being eighth? I've I've never been I've never been ranked that low. Like I went back and watched um, one of your videos, Mickey, where uh, I I believe it was one of your first contests. It was a uh, a kimchi eating contest, and oh, yeah. I think like just watching the, the body language of the other eaters. <laughs> it was obvious that your presence was known even that early on. Yeah, I, I definitely stuck out because uh, I think at that time I had the highest qualifying number, um, yeah, for, for Nathan's qualifier. Um, mm. Like, for, yeah, I, I mean, of course, a lot of people have eaten more than 40 hot dogs, but nobody did it, I think, on their first shot in a 10-minute event. Just max. Um, yeah, yeah, at the time. But yeah, so I mean, I, I caught the attention of a lot of people. And also, I, I think for better or worse, I stuck out because I was just really, really excited to be there. And I wanted to meet everybody and I wanted to juice myself. And I was just like, I was like a happy little spastic puppy just running around trying to make friends with everybody. It's kind of funny. In, in this video series now, I almost seem to be running the competitive eating circuit because I started <laughs> off doing a video with Katie Prettyman. And then I did a video with George's Mortgage Board, and now I'm doing a video with y'all. And I'm sure you, <laughs> you've both probably been asked this question a million times, and I'm sorry to have you rehash it. But <laughs> what got you into competitive eating? Um, I don't know. I've answered this question like in a lot of different ways. I think in life, you just it's important to be brave and or just try new things and I happened to try a man versus food type challenge because I had a feeling that I could finish it and uh, I happened to you know and, and I did and I happened to collect the jackpot but like more importantly it's like I probably tried a billion weird activities that I could have like turned into a competitive career but I was probably just not good at any of them and eating happened to be where that one thing where I excelled so it was just probably looking back it's just dumb luck um, yeah I don't know. So yeah, I did a food challenge. I, I earned fifteen hundred and ten dollars, and then I got up the guts to do head-to-head -head events, and I, you know, won my first few and joined Major League Eating. Yeah, I was a competitive bodybuilder for like ten years, and my appetite kind of just became a running joke. And um, I was just I had kids, and I needed a competitive outlet. <clears throat> and somebody told me, "Hey, you should try this." Um, you know, basically a jelly donut punch eating contest. And so I said, no, you, you can win money. So I went and like, all I know is that I've been hemorrhaging money doing bodybuilding. And, um, and I, that wasn't really in the cards being, being dad. So I went and I won kind of handily and I made money and we donated money to charity. And I'm like, it's a pretty sweet deal. And then from there, it's just kind of snowballed. And what was really cool is, you know, I played sports my entire life and then did bodybuilding for 10 years. And I was never really good at any of the sports. I was, I was mediocre just based on um, my hatred for losing. And so, but I was kind of lacking anything you, somebody might call ability. So going into competitive eating and then having somewhat of a, an apparent gift at it, it's like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'm actually winning things, and you know, I can work hard and get kind of reimbursed, so to speak. That was a uh, that was pretty cool. Like one thing I've noticed with you two, especially in your videos, is whenever you approach a challenge video, like eating two seventy two ounce steaks, <laughs> you do it so clean and so proper. And it, you almost make it look effortless. Like, I've seen other people do <laughs> similar videos where at the end of the video, it yeah. looks like they're dying. Like, it looks like they're about <laughs> to physically die. How, how do you do that? <laughs> um, one, I mean, there, there are definitely, there have been challenges that have pushed me to my limits. One of those was the 16 and a half pounds of uh, gyro sandwiches um, at Southside Six. That's probably the most I've eaten in solid foods ever. And I was uncomfortable. Um, 
and I tried to eat as clean as possible, but like uh, everything beyond everything other than that, um, like 72 ounce steaks just felt, felt manageable, I guess. Um, but yeah, with that said, um, unless there's, uh, time constraints or I'm competing against other people, um, I don't see the need to eat quickly, especially when you're in a restaurant setting, right? Where other people are there to enjoy their meals. They might be celebrating birthday, having a business meeting, whatever. Nobody's there to watch you do a food challenge. Like if you're at a eating contest, like say you're at Nathan's, in which case that crowd is there to watch a contest. They know what they're getting themselves into. At a restaurant, it's not about me. Or it's not about whoever's doing the challenge. So like, I don't want to cause a huge mess um, and possibly even make people lose their appetites. I think that's a little bit selfish. So um, unless it's absolutely necessary, I don't like being a slob. Um, or throwing things in water and all that. Um, and as far as it looking effortless, I, I'll take that as a compliment. Honestly, if people watch our videos and say, hey, that looked delicious, that was a lot more food than I want to eat, but I want to eat what she just had, and I feel like I did a great job. So how do you two stay fit while eating as much as you do? It's a Nick question. No, um, I was uh, it, obviously, like I said, the, was a bodybuilder for ten, you know, plus years. Um, been a personal trainer and managed gyms and worked in vitamin shop for pretty much my entire adult life. Um, and I do actually do customized diets and training programs for clients. It's my my nine to five, so to speak. Um, so there's, I'm fortunate enough to have a base of a reasonable amount of muscle tissue to keep my metabolism up and a reasonable amount of knowledge on how to balance calories. And the way I always tell people is body composition is, or body, not body composition, weight is very much like a budget. So if I have to spend 20,000 calories, so to speak, on a Sunday, and my weekly allotment to maintain my weight may be 28,000 calories, I only have 8,000 calories to use Monday through Saturday, which is not a lot. You know, you're talking 1,400 a day or so, about 1,300 a day. So basically just balancing it that way or days leading up to said challenge and days beyond um, being active. You know, I, I work out five-ish days a week um, and we're active the other two days. Um, so just that caloric balance and, you know, she's more into doing like some cardio and stuff. Uh, She'll lift with me sometimes, obviously more into the lifting, but it's really balancing things out. Is it optimal for body composition? Definitely not. I would not ever say like, oh yeah, no, tell a client on Monday, I want you to eat a hundred hard boiled eggs on Tuesday. Um, but um, it's what we do. It's, it's how we balance our lives. Now this question is specifically for you, Nick. What is your chicken wing eating technique? Because 223 chicken wings is <laughs> insane. Thank you. Um, so I was fortunate enough to, um, that was actually the first chicken wing contest I ever did in my life. Um, so that w that went very, very well to uh, to only place behind Stony Esper and Chestnut. Uh, I And it's all the flats. At the Hooters Winging Championship, so you don't have to deal with the drums. So I definitely prefer that contest, and they, you know, or at least that style. Um, but I'll grab the end, and you can kind of, um, you can break the knuckle. If you pinch it, you can break the knuckle and just pull off like that. And they're going by displacement. Um, so obviously you want to get as much as possible. If you choose to go back, because there's a big flap of meat, go ahead. But for me, it's typically pull, and I can pretty much clear it in one shot, throw it down in the tray. Try to throw it uh, to the back I of the just tray, blinked. and then we. <laughs> no, you're oh, good. You, wow. you almost made it. That's, That's amazing. Incredible. No, you said about 45 minutes. I think we're at 8:42, so it's you crazy. you pretty much, you pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, lasted the entire thing. That I don't know how you do that. That's crazy. That is much crazier than 223 chicken wings. That day just went really well. I was in a really good mood. Um, I had a hot date earlier that day. It <laughs> Day. I knew I'd have another hot day oh, after the wing eating God. contest, and she would God. still go out with me even though I was covered in wing sauce God. and gross. Um, so I think that being in a really good place mentally probably helped, and then um, probably not overthinking it. Being this was my first wing contest, it was just like, <laughs> see how this goes. And uh, and yeah, so break, pull, discard, 
continue. One question I have about competitive eating, and this is from my limited experience with researching it on my own and looking to potentially get it into it myself, is like when I'm trying to eat fast, like I run into the problem of I take this big bite. Where what do I do with the food that's already in my mouth <laughs> before I take another big bite? <laughs> How do you approach um, that? <laughs> you you kind of learn to take bites that are pretty much like the largest bites that you can swallow before it becomes obviously dangerous or choking yeah. or what have you. Um, because we'll make the same mistake in contests. Sometimes yeah. you you'll bite off more. It's like now you have to chew it, and the, there's two problems with chewing. One, you're wasting time. Two it's hard to turn that reflex off. Mm -hmm. So once you start chewing stuff, you put more stuff in your mouth, your mouth's like, this is good. I'm going to chew it. Safety first. And you're like, well, I'm losing money. The more you're chewing. <laughs> so if you just cut that nonsense out. Like yeah. a demonstration about like bite sizes. But I'm looking around, we just have like croissants and super dry donuts yeah, and everything else is in the there's fridge. Nothing really there's nothing really used. There's nothing, yeah, there's nothing. But yeah, you just want to take like a big, as big of a bite as you can that will go down with like maybe literally like half a sip of water mm -hmm. just to lubricate or none. Half, or none. I look like I've been crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. We know the truth. <laughs> Probably give you shorter answers to like make this easier on you. One thing I've noticed while watching uh, competitive eating contests is one of the biggest things to me or one of the most entertaining factors for me is the announcers and how the announcers kind of hype everything up and one thing I especially like is when everybody's coming out that they typically give each competitive eater like almost a WWE style intro mm -hmm. and uh, my question to both of you is do you have a favorite introduction that's been given for you? Favorite introduction? You've had a zillion. I mean, yeah, you know. my, mine have all been, I don't know, I've been fortunate. All mine have been pretty cool and memorable. Whether it's, uh, you know, George Shea giving his iconic 4th of July speeches. Um, I kind of can't remember any of his one-liners. It's just, the, the build-up is really cool. Sam Barclay's just awesome yeah. all around though yeah i i love it just sam opening his mouth sam, much sam oozes charisma mm -hmm. he he walks into the room and it's very much his room <laughs> sam barclay i love you if you're watching this <laughs> um but no in all seriousness he's and he's phenomenal at what he does and obviously there's the the george and richet's um you know george had a funny one this fourth of july I think he said, like, Sunday, he does shoulders, Tuesdays, or Mondays, he does shoulders, Wednesdays, whatever, he does shoulders, and then Thursdays, he does delts, <laughs> and I didn't know it was even coming, anything like that, so typically with me, there's something new each time, or Sam Barkley always guarantees that you're not going to see a lime green Speedo gracing the stage uh, when I come <laughs> up, so that's a fun one, but um, yeah, it's... She even knows how excited I get because each time when the MC goes on, we're all ready for the contest. We're about to go on stage. Um, I have to go to the bathroom. I get like anxiety. <laughs> and I have to go to the bathroom every single time. I hear that the MC's voice um, to the point where I've almost missed me being called out on stage a couple times because I had to run yeah. to the restroom. So I agree. That is a um, very an integral part of what we do. So I will both. Uh, we'll get both of you individually to say, I was not able to beat Joe in a staring contest. Oh, I was not able to beat Joe at a staring contest. I was not able to beat Joe at a staring contest. I am now 17 and 0. <laughs> I, I'm still going to count this as one, even though I was well, up, up yeah. against <laughs> both of you. And... Uh, I would like each of you individually to call out somebody to c come on and uh, be on the other side and stare at me. <laughs> uh, please, uh, Michelle, let's go um, take on Joe in a staring contest because I feel like if anybody can win, it's you. Michelle, let's go. So she's a, a 
I don't know. She she really gives me a run for my money at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Um, I believe she. I don't know her number from uh, 2019, but uh, you know we, she's been on the circuit for a while, and uh, she's a great friend and a great competitor. She's incredibly competitive. She she'll probably practice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Michelle Lasko is my vote. Ronnie Hartman, get on here, take on Joe in a staring contest. Boom, what is up guys? My name is Megabyte Ronnie. And Hartman's actually a professional wrestler and uh, he's ranked with us as well. I want to say he's like 18th or something, give or take. 18th or 20th in the world as a competitive eater. Uh, genuinely nice guy, again, super competitive. And he's got a beautiful head of hair right now. Seriously, I think it's bleached and long and he'd be a good person to have on here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been wanting to get a uh, professional wrestler on here too. So that kind yeah. of fits it's, both it's of perfect. those boxes. You are you are the Bill Goldberg of staring contests right now with your with your tally going, and now this Ronnie can be your um your your jobber that comes out during the commercial to no music. Tell us what you're doing. Uh, tell us about your channel. Uh, plug whatever you've got to plug. So check out thehungrycouple.com. Everything her and I on there. All the social media links: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All the things kids are using nowadays. Um, YouTube.com slash Miki Sudo. You can find the link again through the website. Go straight there. Yeah, um, we wanted to thank you, everybody, for getting us um, to almost 37,000 subscribers. Um, we even put out a video in a few weeks. So now that we've made our move and we're close to having the apartment set up, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll hopefully at least go live sometime soon. So, yeah, please uh, check out the YouTube channel. But I uh, thank you to everybody who supported it. You know. Yeah, genuinely appreciate it. All the support. Keep checking out the channel. Check out the website. Check out Joe. Like, comment, subscribe, Good. share. Keep your ears peeled for any upcoming Major League Eating news. And we hope to see you soon at a contest near you. I will put a link to your channel and your website in the video Thank description. You. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's going to be it for this episode of Who's Joe YouTube Edition. If you haven't already liked the video, go ahead and do that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. If you haven't already subscribed to Mickey Sudo, go ahead and do that. Click on the link in the video description. Do it right now. So we'll stare here and wait. I, I will <laughs> stare and wait there. I will stare at you until you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that you have done that, there will be a video down here at the bottom left that I have recommended, a video down here at the bottom right that YouTube has recommended. Watch one of them. Watch both of them. Watch all of my videos and watch all of Mickey Sudo's videos. And I will see y'all the next time.